Hello and welcome to the 2018 NPMS Operator Webinar. This webinar is being presented as a slideshow with narration. I am Amy Nelson, FIMSIS GIS Manager. The rest of the team members recording this webinar are Leah Gooding, FIMSIS GIS Coordinator, Katie Field, the Michael Baker Project Manager, and Belinda Monhe, Michael Baker's Senior GIS Analyst. We are not a large call center. We have six full-time staff and several part-time staff. We decided to try something different with this year's webinar. In the past, we have had a series of telecons with a screen share. The drawbacks with that method were that not everyone could get a spot, the registration process was time consuming, and some of the attendees had difficulty with the links. This new format will eliminate those issues and allow operators to view only the webinar segments of interest. Please email us if you have questions about the webinar material or if you would like to give us feedback on this new format. The webinar is broken down into four chapters shown here. They are posted as separate files. In this chapter, we'll talk about operator resources on the website, various documentation, and available demo videos. In the rest of chapter one, we'll review various resources available to assist you with the NPMS submission process, starting with the NPMS website. The NPMS homepage organizes information based on the type of NPMS user you are. Click on the pipeline operator to see how to access NPMS maps, GIS data, and most importantly, how to make an NPMS data submission. Below, everyone can quickly access PIMA or the Public Map Viewer for exploring and printing maps from the NPMS. Remember, the Public Map Viewer will give you access to everyone's pipelines, but only limited attributes, map scales, and only the pipelines in one county at a time. PIMA, on the other hand, does not limit attributes, map scales, or extents, but you can only view data submitted for your OPID. Just below the PIMA login button is a link to follow in case you forgot your password. At the top of the pipeline operator page is all the information you need to make an NPMS submission. This is where you can download the current version of our two primary operator documents, the operator standards and the operator submission guide. I'll explain the difference between those two in a minute. The third link highlighted here takes you to the About OSAVE page. OSAVE is the operator submission and validation environment, which is a one-stop shop for everything related to NPMS pipeline submissions. Go to this page to read about OSAVE and access help guides and demo videos. Chapter three of this webinar series is an overview of the OSAVE application. The pipeline operator section of our website is also where you can access HCA data or request a copy of your NPMS data. The two primary documents every operator should download and use during the NPMS submission process are the Operator Standards Manual and the Operator Submission Guide. The Operator Standards are the formal requirements referenced in 49 CFR Parts 191.29 and 195.61. The regulations state that every NPMS submission must include geospatial data, attributes, metadata, and a transmittal letter appropriate for use in the NPMS, and that acceptable formats are specified in this operator standards manual. One of the most important figures in this manual is 3-1, titled Pipeline Attribute Table. This figure summarizes every attribute, what it means, acceptable values, and data roles. If you want to make it a successful NPMS submission, I suggest you print this figure and reference it regularly. Chapter four of this webinar series will review the most common errors we see in NPMS submission attempts. Many of them could be avoided if you closely reference this figure while preparing your NPMS submission. Next, the operator submission guide, or what we commonly call the tips for preparing a complete and accurate submission, takes a different approach by organizing guidance by scenario or task. If you have new construction, there's a section that summarizes how to accurately represent that change in your submission. If you bought or sold pipelines, there's a section for that. Abandoned pipelines, conflation, or projects where you resurvey your pipeline locations, understanding status codes and revision codes, or even to learn about the internal NPMS submission process so you know exactly what we do with your submission and what you should expect from us. There are sections dedicated to all of these topics and scenarios. The NPMS team produced this guide to, with answers to all of the questions we hear every year. So if you have a question, it is likely answered in this guide. If your question is not answered in this guide, please reach out to us directly. We also update this guide based on new tools and common issues, so every year you should download the current version of the Operator Standards Manual and the Operator Submission Guide. In addition to written documentation, we've developed a library of video demos that walk you through using not only PIMA and the Public Viewer, 
but also seven different OSAVE workflows. This slide outlines where you can access those demo videos, including help menus inside of applications, the MPMS website, and PHMSA's YouTube channel. This concludes Chapter 1 of the 2018 MPMS Operator Webinar. This is Chapter 2 of the NPMS 2018 webinar. I'm Amy Nelson, PHMSA's GIS Manager. New tools, features, and projects in the past year include the progress of the information collection, NPMS apps for the iPhone, dataset refreshes, new voluntary attribute options, including facility response plan sequence numbers, and purge line fill material, NPMS submission prioritization and QC related to pipeline inspections, and a new password reset tool. Regarding the NPMS information collection, it's currently under review by the Office of Management and Budget, and we do expect a decision from them in the next couple of months. If you have not heard about the information collection previously, please take a look at the Federal Register Notice and the Draft Standards Manual, which are at the links on this slide. The information will impact all hazardous liquid and gas transmission operators. When we have reached a decision about the information collection, we'll communicate it through a Federal Register Notice and an email to all of our primary and technical contacts. We are very aware that operators need sufficient time to prepare their data before submitting it under the new standards. We released two new iPhone apps in 2017. If you have a Pima login, you can use the Pima app, but you'll only see your own pipelines. The Public Viewer app doesn't require a password, but will show you one county's pipeline data per session. The next slide shows you how to download these apps. They are not available for Android due to market fragmentation, which drives up the development cost. You can download the mobile apps by visiting these links on the NPMS homepage. The buttons highlighted will show you how to go to the App Store and find the apps. As you can see with the Public Viewer iPhone app, you can see one county and state per session. Harris County, Texas is shown on this slide. The gas lines are in blue and the liquid lines are in red. You would click the X on the bottom left to open the toolbar. You can see how you can turn the layers on and off and how accidents and incidents are included. In 2017, PHMSA continued its work to update the unusually sensitive area datasets. Please note the USA datasets pertain only to hazardous liquid operators. PHMSA is in the process of refreshing the drinking water USAs as well as the ecological USAs. Data source challenges for the drinking water USAs have included lack of adequate alternative data, the data being maintained at the state level rather than at the federal level by EPA, and some source data sets not being available in all states. I hope to have an update on our progress later in this calendar year. Regarding ecological USAs, our new license agreement with the data provider prohibits us from displaying the eco USAs on Pima. When the data set is ready for download, communication options could include a federal register notice. We plan to send out a mass email to the primary and technical contacts for liquid operators. We'll also post information about this update on the What's New link on the NPMS homepage. The Pipes Act of 2016 included a mandate to expand the definition of an ecological USA to include three specific terms, the Great Lakes, coastal beaches, and marine coastal waters. Separate from the EcoUSA data refresh Amy just discussed, we will produce GIS data and definitions and modify the language in 49 CFR Part 195.6b to include these three terms. We started this process by holding a public meeting on November 17, 2017, where stakeholders across industry, government, and the public, including hazardous liquid pipeline operators, GIS specialists, and coastal scientists, came together to discuss definitions and GIS data resources. If you were not able to attend, but your operator ID operates hazardous liquid pipelines, I encourage you to review the meeting transcript, presentations, and other materials, and to comment on the docket. You could find the docket by searching for FIMSA-2017-0094 at regulations.gov. Next steps will be announced soon. High population and other population areas were also updated during 2017 based on the most current census designated place and incorporated place boundaries. The HPAs are census urban areas with 50,000 or more people and population densities of 1,000 or more people per square mile. 
while the OPAs include 2017 places outside of these HPAs. Download these data layers and a list of HPAs with population totals and density information from the operator section of the MPMS website. Starting in 2018, operators can choose to include their Facility Response Plan, or FRP, sequence numbers directly in their MPMS submissions. This really helps to improve efficiency of FRP reviews and the ability to identify the correct FRP during a release. If you are interested in improving FRP mapping, you can read about adding this attribute to your NPMS submission in Figure 3.1 from the operator standards. Also new in 2018, operators are encouraged to use the Commodity Description field to describe the fill material if a pipeline is purged. Often active pipelines that are subject to federal regulations are purged with water, nitrogen, or another fill material, and inspectors really value knowing this information. If you choose to include this information in your MPMS submission, it is one less piece of information an inspector may need to ask you for separately. At FIMSA, we're also taking a new approach to MPMS submission compliance at the inspection level. Submission processing will be prioritized if an inspection could be planned for your OPID this year, and the status and issues in your submission will be relayed to the FIMSA Regional Office Inspector for your OPID and inspection record. Please note, attempting an MPMS submission with missing components incomplete or inaccurate information does not put your OPID into compliance with the MPMS submission regulations in 49 CFR parts 191.29 or 195.61. Please also note that poor MPMS submissions or not responding to requests from MPMS staff for corrections or clarifications delays submission processing for all pipeline operators. So even if your OPID isn't identified for inspection planning this year, we will still report operators with patterns or a history of being uncooperative or making the same mistakes year after year to FIMSA inspectors in the region offices. Certain operators consume an improportionate amount of FIMSA's resources every year, and FIMSA is taking notice. These are resources that should be directed to, into pipeline safety improvements, not addressing the same mistakes and errors for the same operators year after year. Finally, we're developing a PIMA password reset tool in 2018. MPMS staff will no longer need to create your password for you or call you when you forget your password. Instead, you will create your own password and you can reset your own password, day or night. This concludes Chapter 2 of the 2018 MPMS Operator Webinar. Welcome to Chapter 3 of the 2018 Operator Webinar. We're going to review the Operator Submission and Validation Environment. The Operator Submission and Validation Environment, which is referred to as OSAVE, is a web-based application that assists pipeline operators with reviewing and querying their current MPMS data and submission history, updating their MPMS-related contacts, and submitting notifications and data in relation to the yearly submission requirement defined in 49 CFR Part 191.29 and Part 195.61. OSAVE is accessible to operators throughout the year. There are several places you can go for help with OSAVE. The About OSAVE webpage, which is accessible from the Pipeline Operator page on the MPMS website, contains a general overview of the environment. The OSAVE user guide contains a detailed description of the tools and workflows, including a list of the questions you'll be prompted to address in the notification and submission paths. There's also a series of topic-specific instructional videos to show you an example of what usage of the environment looks like. The user guide and the instructional videos are accessible from the About OSAVE page and from the Help menu within OSAVE itself. When you open OSAVE, you are prompted to log in. OSAVE uses your PIMA account. For information on who can obtain a PIMA account and its usage, please refer to Section 2B of the Operator Submission Guide. If you are a direct employee of the operating company and do not yet have a PIMA account, please request one by completing the application found on the Apply for PIMA Access button on the MPMS homepage. Once logged into OSAVE, you'll be prompted to select an OPID from the drop-down list. The OPIDs listed in the drop-down are the same OPIDs that are associated with your PIMA account. If an OPID is missing from the list, please email MPMS staff to request that the missing OPID be added to your existing PIMA account. In this example, you'll see that my login is associated with OPID 12345. Please note that OPID 12345 does not actually exist. Any data displayed, displayed for this operator is for example purposes only and does not represent actual pipelines. 
After selecting continue, the active OSAVE session will relate to the selected OPID. After the OPID is selected, the general homepage opens. The general homepage contains a set of pipeline-related tools and pathways. The operator should select the Continue button for the tool or workflow that applies to the intent of that particular visit. While the OPID's LNG plants and breakout tanks are displayed in the OSAVE map viewer, OSAVE is a pipeline environment. All the tools and workflow relate to pipelines only. For instance, you cannot send your LNG plant submission to MPMS staff through OSAVE. For detailed information on LNG plant and breakout tank submissions, please visit the corresponding sections under the Pipeline Operator webpage on the MPMS website. Next, we're going to take a look at each of the four tools and workflows. But first, I want to point out that the Help menu I mentioned earlier is located in the upper right-hand corner. The active OSAVE session and the selected OPID are listed in the lower right-hand corner. First, we're going to talk about the Review Current Data tool. After clicking on this tool, the OSAVE map viewer opens. This map viewer allows the operator to view the pipelines, LNG plans, and breakout tanks data currently in the MPMS national layer for the OPID selected during the login. Additionally, the pipelines that the OPID previously reported as abandoned are displayed. You can build a custom query for the pipelines through the filter pipeline data tool and view a summarized list of mileage by commodity, system, or county and state under the data summary menu. This viewer may assist you in determining if changes are needed for the next submission requirement. The NPS data cannot be edited through this viewer. Along the lower toolbar, you see a notification that the viewer is in review only mode as a reminder. This map viewer is intended to be used at any time throughout the year. Please note that census data is the same data layer that is used in other MPMS map viewers, such as PIMA on the public viewer. The pipelines in the gas transmission pipelines and the hazardous liquid pipelines layers have been segmented by MPMS staff on the county boundaries. Next, we're going to talk about the View Submission History tool. The View Submission History tool lists the pipeline submissions and notifications that MPMS staff has received for the OPID since 2010. The date when the submission or notification was incorporated into the internal version of the MPMS national layer is also displayed. When the value is blank, it means that the submission or notification has not yet completed the MPMS processing workflow and is not yet included in the MPMS national layer. The data in the MPMS map viewers, including PIMA, the public viewer, and OSAPE, are snapshots in time and are updated from an export of the internal version of the MPMS national layer approximately every two months. If you find that the recorded production date was less than two months ago, your submission data may not yet be reflected in the map viewers. If you have questions about the status, you can contact MPMS staff or you can contact the OPID's primary or technical contacts who will receive an email when the submission data is reflected in the map viewers. When requested by an auditor or inspector to provide proof of the MPMS submission, you may provide them a screen capture of this table. Next, we're going to talk about the Update OPID Contact Information Tool. Through the Update OPID Contact Information Tool, the operator has the ability to view and update the pipeline-related primary, technical, and public contacts for the OPID at any time throughout the year. For information on what each of these contacts represents, click on the question mark button in the upper right corner to see a description of each contact's role. When you edit any of these contacts through OSAVE, you are directly editing our source database table. Please take care to visit each tab to make sure the information is complete and correct for each of the three contact types. Since the MPMS data in the map viewers and the Find Who's Operating Pipelines in Your Area tool is a snapshot in time, the changes you make to the public contact information today will not be reflected there until the next data update. If a required value, such as the contact's email address, is missing, the text box will be highlighted red and you will not be able to submit the changes. If you do not see the red box on the Currently Active tab, please be sure to click on the other tabs to locate it. On the Pima Map Viewer, we also display the emergency contact associated with your operator ID if it is available. This contact information comes from periodic exports from the FEMSA portal to MPMS staff. If a change to the emergency contact is needed, you need to email MPMS staff requesting the change. 
You'll also need to make the same change in the FEMSA portal so that the next export from the portal does not overwrite NPMS's change. Please note that the OSAVE contact information relates only to pipelines. For changes to the contact information associated with your LNG plant or breakout tanks, contact NPMS staff. Next, we're going to talk about the make a submission or notification of no changes or removal of OPID tool. Upon clicking the continue button, you are routed to the submission homepage. The submission homepage, as its name implies, relates to submitting notifications, edits only, and data to the NPMS staff in relation to fulfilling the yearly NPMS submission requirement. From the submission homepage, you have four options on how to proceed. Only one is completed each year. If you feel like your particular situation is a combination of these pathways, please contact NPMS staff to discuss before proceeding. Let's take a quick look at each of these pathways. First, we're going to talk about submitting a notification of no changes. This notification may be submitted in lieu of a traditional data submission. This notification through OSAVE replaces the need to send an email to NPMS staff. Through this workflow, you'll be first prompted to record what NPMS-related pipelines the OPID operates. If the OPID operates both gas transmission and hazardous liquid pipelines, you'll be prompted to clarify if the notification applies to only the gas portion, only the liquid portion, or both. You will also be prompted to review the information for the primary technical and public contacts. Please be sure to click on each contact tab so each one is reviewed and updated as needed. This notification may be submitted in lieu of a traditional data submission. This notification through OSAVE replaces the need to send an email to NPMS staff. Through this workflow, you will first be prompted to record what NPMS-related pipelines the OPID operates. If the OPID operates both gas transmission and hazardous liquid pipelines, you will be prompted to clarify if the notification applies to only the gas portion, only the liquid portion, or both. You will also be prompted to review the information for the primary, technical, and public contacts. Please be sure to click on each of the contact tabs so each one is reviewed and updated as needed. Upon completion of the workflow, a receipt type message is shown on screen for your records. An email can also be sent to the primary contact, the technical contact, and the logged in user. Once your notification no changes is submitted, do not resubmit additional notifications or data to the NPMS. Coordinate with other staff within your company to make sure that not more than one of you is sending the notification on different days. Also, if you determine that the submitted notification was made in error and a data submission is needed, please contact NPMS staff immediately so there isn't any confusion when we receive your second action. Next, we're going to talk about submitting a request for a removal of the OPID. In the situation where all pipelines in the NPMS should be removed, you'll submit a request to remove the OPID. Please note that this is a request to remove all pipelines in the NPMS for that OPID, not a subset of the pipelines. This notification through OSA replaces the need to email the request to NPMS staff. Through the workflow, you'll be prompted to indicate why the pipelines need to be removed. All that are applicable should be marked. Possible reasons the pipelines are being removed are that they're reclassified, abandoned, divested to another OPID, or were originally submitted in error. If you indicate that the removal is related to pipelines being abandoned, OSAVE will evaluate the pipelines in the NPMS for that OPID to determine if any segments cross a commercially navigable waterway or fall offshore. If so, OSAVE will prompt you to upload the required certificate of abandonment. If you indicate that the removal is related to pipelines being divested to another operator or OPID, OSA will prompt you to supply information about the new operator. Any information is useful, such as the new OPID, the company name, a contact person's name, email, and phone number. NPMS staff will follow up with a new operator to determine whether the pipelines are still operated as FEMSA jurisdictional pipelines and make sure the pipelines are resubmitted under the new operator. Providing this additional information to NPS staff helps us avoid introducing duplicate pipeline data into the national layer. Upon completion of the workflow, a receipt type message is shown on screen for your records. Also, an email will be sent to the primary contact, technical contact, and logged in user. 
Next, we're going to talk about submitting edits and deletions through the OSAVE map viewer. Upon review of your existing NPMS data in the NPMS national layer, you may find that the only changes needed are updates to the attributes and or the removal of some pipelines. An edit mode of the map viewer allows you to indicate the changes and submit them to NPMS staff in lieu of a traditional data submission. The edit mode note along the bottom bar reminds you of which viewer you're within. This edit mode version of the map viewer contains the same filter pipeline data tool as a review only mode and adds a submit button with several menu items. First, you would filter your existing NPMS data based on a custom query, or you can accept all default values to have pipeline segments, all pipeline segments available for editing. Using the attribute table from the results of your filter, you would then check the pipelines which need attribute changes and enter the desired values for these checked pipelines. Similarly, for pipelines that should be deleted, you would check the relevant segments and then mark them for deletion. You would then commit the attribute edits and deletions. Once you are certain all edits and deletions are committed, you would finalize it by submitting the edit session to NPMS staff. The finalized submission workflow includes a series of questions regarding the intent of the submission, a review of the primary technical and public contact information. It is essential that the edits and deletions go through the entire process of being finalized. NPMS staff will not take any action on edits or deletions that are only marked or committed. Upon the final click to finalize the submission, a message of acknowledgement will be shown on screen and will be emailed to the primary contact, the technical contact, and logged in user. Once finalized, this non-traditional submission goes into a queue for NPMS staff action. NPMS staff will look at the edits and deletions and will modify the existing NPMS data to incorporate the changes. If NPMS staff has questions about the intent of your edits or deletions, we will contact you. When the NPMS staff has reviewed the edits and deletions and has had all questions addressed, the primary and technical contacts will receive a receipt type email from NPMS staff stating that the yearly NPMS submission requirement has been fulfilled. Please note that the simple act of submitting the edits and deletions through OSAVE does not mean your yearly requirement is fulfilled. Next, we're going to talk about uploading geospatial and attribute data. When a data submission is needed to capture all the changes to the OPID, you will convey the data to NPMS staff via the Upload Geospatial and Attribute Data workflow. This submission workflow replaces the need to send the data via the FTP upload tool. It also eliminates the need to send a the separate requirement of a cover slash transmittal letter and metadata file. You have two options on what is included in the submission. One option is that the submission contains only additions. NPMS staff will add the additions to the existing data in the NPMS for that OPID. The second option is that all pipelines are included. In this instance, NPMS staff will process the data submission with the intention of removing all the existing NPMS data and replacing it with the submission data. Through the workflow, you'll be prompted to answer a series of questions about the data in this mission, including a question clarifying the NPMS type of pipelines that the OPID operates and included in this mission. There is a series of questions intended to capture a summary of changes that have occurred in the data since the previous mission, which I'll go into more detail shortly. You'll be able to upload your certificate of abandonment if applicable to your submission. You will also have the opportunity to upload any supporting documentation or files if applicable. You'll be prompted to review and update the contact information for the primary technical and public contacts. You'll be prompted to define if the geospatial data and the attribute data are included in the same file or separate files. If the geospatial and attributes are stored in separate files, you'll be asked to define the attribute that connects the two, such as the opera link attribute. You will be prompted to define the projection if the geospatial data does not have a projection file. Finally, you'll be prompted to upload the data. The submitted data is put into a queue for automated QC review. This review checks the attribute data against the requirements defined in the pipeline attribute table and the NPMS operator standards. The automated review is looking for things such as the presence of required attributes, Attribute names must be spelled as listed in the standards. It's also looking for the correct attribute definition. For instance, PLINE-D must be defined as text. It's looking for that required attributes are populated, and if the attribute is related to domain, only valid values were used. When you're submitting the geospatial data, you must use the zip file. Please take care not to place the submission files within a folder in the zip file. 
Since the OSAVE QC review tool is expecting the data files to be at the root of the zip file, if a folder is included, your submission will automatically fail. When the review of the automated QC tool has completed, the primary and technical contacts and logged in user will receive an email with the results of the review. If errors were found, the problems are listed in the email. You will need to correct the errors and resubmit the data by going through the same OSAVE workflow. If no errors were found, the email will state that and a submission will be placed in the queue for MPMS staff action, which is the manual review. During the manual review, MPMS staff will look for potential errors like pipelines that were excluded without explanation, pipelines that were added but have a revision code that indicate that they previously existed, abandoned pipelines that are missing the required certification, and whether the MPMS submission data mileage matches the annual report. If questions arise during the manual review, MPMS staff will contact you for clarification or resubmission. Once all questions are addressed, MPMS staff will send the primary and technical contacts an email to use as a receipt for the submission and to let you know that the submission has moved past the stage one review and into the MPMS processing workflow. When the data submission has been incorporated into the MPMS national layer and is viewable on the MPMS website, MPMS staff will send another email to the primary and technical contact to let them know. Please note that submitting data that passes through the automated QC review does not automatically qualify the submission as fulfilling the yearly MPMS requirement. This does not occur until the submission data has been reviewed and processed by MPMS staff and all questions and issues have been addressed. As I mentioned earlier, in the OSAVE Upload Geospatial and Attribute Data Workflow, you are asked a series of questions as part of the submission process related to what changes have occurred in, since the last submission. Several of these questions are related to pipelines that were intentionally omitted from this year's submission. Reasons that the pipelines were not included are they may have been abandoned but are not required because they fall onshore and do not cross a commercially navigable waterway. They were re reclassified or removed from the ground, or they were divested or ceasing operatorship. In each one of these scenarios, you'll be prompted to describe in a text box the pipelines in the existing MPMS national data layer that it applies to. We would like for you to identify the pipelines that will make it the most clear to us. This could be a list of P-line IDs or a list of systems or even a statement saying all pipelines in a particular state. In step 11 of the full replacement pathway, you could opt to upload a shapefile of the removed pipelines as supporting information for us to reference. Since the entry text box do not retain formatting well and have a character limit, you could also opt to load a spreadsheet or document if it's easier. If using supporting files instead of the text box, please include a note in the text box pointing MPMS staff to refer to the supporting file. If you have more than one reason why the pipelines were not included, like some were re reclassified and some were divested, or some were divested to operator X and some were divested to operator Y, in your supporting shapefile, spreadsheet, or document, please make sure to categorize which pipelines relate to each reason. Similarly, if opting to describe the pipelines divested in the text box and the pipelines were transferred to more than one operator, please be sure to make it clear which di pipelines were divested to whom. In addition to describing which pipelines are divested, you'll be prompted to supply contact information about the new operator. Any and all information is appreciated, an OPID, company name, contacts name, email, and phone number. We'll look for these pipelines in the new operator's submission, or we'll reach out to the new operator if we haven't yet received a submission, so that we do not lose track of these divested pipelines. Please keep in mind that when transferring pipelines between OPIDs within a single company, we consider that to be a divestiture or ceasing of operatorship, so please make sure you let us know within the relevant workflow question. If during the review of your submission, pipelines are found to have been excluded from your submission without an explanation, MPMS staff will hold back the submission from further processing to follow up with you for clarification. We do this to make sure the pipelines aren't missing an error and if they're intentionally omitted, we need to understand how to move forward with them. For instance, should we set the pipeline to abandon? Is there another operator we should reach out to? For additional information about abandoned pipelines, please refer to chapter four of this webinar series, which discusses commonly found issues in this mission. Another series of questions in the upload geospatial and attribute data workflow relate to pipelines that are new to the OPID in this year's submission. There are four scenarios when this applies. One is that pipelines are newly constructed and went into service. 
NPMS defines new construction to occur when mileage is added to the OPID or a pipeline is rerouted. These are marked as revision codes C. A portion of the pipeline that is repaired or replaced in the same location is not considered to be new construction. Another reason that pipelines may be added is because pipelines have changed in their classification and are now qualified to be submitted to the NPMS. For instance, the pipeline that was previously operated as a gathering pipeline is now operated as a transmission pipeline. These are marked as revision code J. Pipelines that were excluded from the NPMS submission in the past in error and are now being included this year as a correction are marked as revision code A. Another addition is when pipelines are acquired from or operatorship was assumed from another OPID. These are marked also as revision code A. You will be prompted to supply information about the former operator. Again, any information you have is appreciated. So that we do not inadvertently create duplicate data in the NPMS national layer when your submission data is incorporated, we want to make sure we remove the existing pipelines from the previous layer. Please keep this in mind. When transferring pipelines between OPIDs within a single company, we consider that to be an acquisition, so make sure that these pipelines are marked as vision code A. If your company has taken over operation of pipelines, but you're reusing the previous operator's OPID, the pipelines for this OPID are currently in the NPMS national layer. Do not mark these pipelines as additions. Additions are pipelines being added to the NPMS under the specific OPID and is not related directly to the specific operating company. Because additions related to corrections and acquisitions both share revision code A, you'll be prompted to describe which pipelines are being impacted. This could be a list of PLINDs, systems, or subsystems. It could even be a general statement saying something like all submission data with revision code A when only one of the two scenarios apply. Like in the intentionally removed pipelines, if it's clear to upload a shapefile, spreadsheet, or document to caption the information, you're welcome to do so. In this case, please put a note in the text box directing NPMS staff to the supporting files. When pipelines are acquired from more than one operator, please be clear about which pipelines relate to which former operator. If you're under, uncertain what already exists in the NPMS for that OPID, you can use the OSAVE Map Viewer to review the data, or you can submit a request to receive an export of the data currently in the NPMS for your OPID. If you're interested in submitting a request, please use the Request Pipeline GIS data link on the Pipeline Operator page to be routed to the online request form. If during the review we identify pipelines that are newly added but do not have revision code C, J, or A, we'll reach out to you for clarification and possibly resubmission. We must have a clear understanding of the changes that have occurred in the pipelines before we're able to move forward with the review. When you address these questions about added pi pipelines, please take care that your responses and submission data match. NPMS staff have received conflicting information which causes confusion. When this happens, the submission must be placed on hold from further processing to receive clarification from the oper operator regarding the correct intent and possibly resubmission of the data. You may wonder why we ask you for information about pipelines that are divested or acquired when you're required to submit a type B, D, or E notification to FEMSA. We gather this information from you because these notifications are not always submitted as required. Additionally, in some occasions, the description of the impact of pipelines entered into the notification are not specific enough for NPMS staff to confidently identify the pipelines within the NPMS data to make the appropriate actions during processing. For additional information about rules and tips when adding new pipelines to the NPMS data, you may refer to Chapter 4 of this webinar series, which discusses issues commonly found in submissions. OSA was first released for the 2017 submission year. After its initial release, we added a few enhancements in May 2017. We are now in the process of working on another set of enhancements as of early January 2018 are in the testing phase and will be released shortly. These enhancements are briefly listed on the slide. Status updates on the release of these enhancements will be sent out through email to the primary and technical contacts and will be added to the What's New page on the NPMS website. We just briefly discussed OSAVE and its various tools and pathways. Please be sure to consult the operator submission guide to understand the submission and notification types in greater detail. Consult the OSAVE user guide and instructional videos for detailed information on the environment's functionality. This concludes Chapter 3 of the 2018 MPMS Operator Webinar Series. Welcome to Chapter 4 of the MPMS Operator Webinar Series. 
In this chapter, we will review common submission errors. Remember, you must use the same OPID for each pipeline on the MPMS and annual report submittals. This means an accurate MPMS submittal will include the same pipeline mileage as an accurate annual report submission. As a quality control test, each submission to the MPMS is compared to the annual report for the same OPID. The MPMS submission is rejected if the mileage per state, interstate status, and commodity type, meaning gas transmission or hazardous liquid, does not match within 5%. We allow for 5% discrepancies, not so you can omit up to 5% of your pipelines from your NPMS submission or annual report, but because GIS systems can differ in terms of projection, 3D measurements, and boundary data sources. You can avoid this problem by comparing your NPMS and annual report mileages yourself and confirming all active pipelines, meaning pipes in the NPMS with status codes I, D, or R, are included in your annual report. Permanently abandoned lines are not included on annual reports and are not included in this quality control test. The MPMS Metadata Attribute Builder tool was retired in 2016 after the release of OSAVE for the 2017 submission year. The contents of the MPMS Metadata Attribute Builder tool and cover letter template were incorporated into the OSAVE submission workflows in order to reduce the number of file components required to be submitted by the operator, save the operator time from having to download submission-related software or tools every year, and allow MPMS staff to receive all of the essential information needed to accurately process the operator submission data while providing the operator a user-friendly method to deliver that information. A separate document containing the responses to all of the questions listed in Section 2.3 of the Operator Standards must be included in the submission package only if an operator is unable to use OSAVE to make their annual data submission to the MPMS. Please note that the old cover letter template, previously available for download on the NPMS website, no longer includes all of the questions found in Section 2.3 of the Operator Standards and should no longer be used. Because the operator is already directed to answer the cover letter related questions during the submission workflow in OSAVE, it is not necessary to include the same responses duplicated in the old cover letter template. However, MPMS staff do encourage operators to provide supplemental documents that contain detailed information not able to be easily provided throughout the workflow. With clear and specific details, MPMS staff may better understand the submission data and process the submission accordingly based on the operator's notes without holding back the submittal for further clarification. For additional information about OSAVE, you may refer to Chapter 3 of the webinar series. To help operators with their MPMS data submission, we have created both GIS templates as well as attribute templates in Microsoft Excel format for operators without a GIS system that submit CAD data, coordinate latitude longitude data, or shapefiles without incorporated attributes to the MPMS. These templates are available for download from the pipeline operator page in the MPMS website under the summary of required components for pipeline submission section. The MPMS is aware that some operators may not be able to create the operlink field within their geospatial data file to act as the connection to the attribute data and correspond to the operlink attributes included in the separate Excel file containing the MPMS required attributes. For operators that are limited to the field names created by their software package, such as the layer field in CAD files, MPMS staff has added a section within the OSA workflow that allows operators to relay this information to MPMS staff. Answering this question correctly and providing this information from the start prevents the submission from being held back from processing due to any confusions. Since the purpose of the OperaLink is strictly to act as a link between the pipeline segments and their respective attribute records, once the link is established, the OperaLink attribute is removed from the process submission data. For additional information about OSAVE, you may refer to Chapter 3 of the webinar series in Sections 4 and 5 of the Operator Submission Guide for detailed information related to the OperaLink attribute. Another common issue that MPMS staff finds is the use of invalid attribute values or the combination of values when identifying pipelines. The MPMS Operator Standards provides operators with a list of required attribute fields and values, a full description for each of the required attributes, as well as detailed instructions indicating when certain values are and are not required to be used. The Operator Submission Guide is a more user-friendly document that further clarifies the information found within the MPMS Operator Standards, provides example scenarios, and explains why certain attributes and attribute combinations are important to the MPMS. All of these documents are available for viewing or download in PDF format from the Pipeline Operator page on the MPMS website.
When the operator uploads geospatial and attribute data via OSAVE, an automated QC review tool evaluates the submission attribute data. The results of the review are emailed to the primary contact, the technical contact, and the logged in user. When operators submit pipeline data containing invalid attribute values or combination of values, the automated QC review tool identifies these errors and records it in a report showing how many missing or invalid values were captured in the data set. In this example, the QC details section indicates to the user that the uploaded shapefile contains 112 attribute records that do not follow the rules indicated in the MPMS operator standards for low stress. The rule is that only in-service hazardous liquid pipelines must have a low stress attribute populated with the values Y for yes or N for no. When operators receive a failed QC report from OSAVE, it is important to review the statements listed under the QC details section of the QC report refer to the MPMS operator standards for the designated attributes and make the appropriate corrections to the number of records indicated in the OSAVE QC report for that specific attribute before resubmitting via OSAVE. The submission is not complete and will not be placed in the MPMS staff queue for our action until all corrections have been addressed and applied to the data and the resulting QC report logs a passing status. Another combination of values incorrectly submitted via OSAVE is related to the commodity details field which may only be populated with the corresponding acceptable values that are listed in figure 3-1 of the MPMS operator standards for crude, product, or natural gas pipelines. In addition to this, the commodity detail values should not be repeated under each detail column. Each commodity detail field is intended to hold unique acceptable values. Another common mistake we see is improper use of the status code attribute. Please note that FEMS only recognizes two formal operating statuses, which are active and subject to all safety regulations or permanently abandoned. However, the MPMS offers four choices for describing your active or abandoned pipelines with the status code attribute. The first three describe active pipelines and include I for in-service if the pipe is both active and filled, or D for idle, or R for retired if it is active but not currently filled or is currently purged. The fourth option is only for abandoned pipelines. While these pipelines can be submitted to the MPMS, they are excluded from your annual reports, so it's important that you do not misuse the term abandoned. You must use the federal definition in the regulations, which specifies permanently removed from service. Permanent, as in you will not sell it, use it again, or maintain it, and all abandonment procedures are 100% complete per the federal regulations. All other pipelines, even if they are purged, haven't been used in years, or maybe categorized as abandoned per your company's internal definitions, are still active and fully subject to all parts of the safety regulations, including MPMS submissions and annual reports. You can read more about the definition of an abandoned line and applicable definitions and regulations in the Federal Advisory Bulletin published on August 12, 2016. You can find and comment on this bulletin by searching for FIMSA-2016-0075 at regulations.gov. For both idle and retired pipelines, the commodity attribute should reflect the commodity previously transported and the low stress attribute must be left blank. Only permanently abandoned pipelines should be populated with the values for empty gas and empty liquid. For permanently abandoned pipelines, the commodity attribute should reflect the commodity type previously transported by the pipeline. For example, if the permanently abandoned pipeline previously transported a liquid commodity, the commodity must be EPL for empty liquid. Likewise, the commodity must be EPG for empty gas if previously transported a gas commodity. Also, the low stress attribute must be left blank for all permanently abandoned gas and liquid pipelines. Abandoned pipelines do not appear on your FIMSA in your report and are divorced from your operator ID. However, abandoned pipelines are not those that have been removed from the ground, sold to another operator, or may be returned to service. Pipelines that may be returned to service are considered to be idle or retired pipelines. Permanently abandoned pipelines that fall offshore or cross a commercially navigable waterway must be included in the submission to the MPMS and must be accompanied by a certificate of abandonment. A template has been created and is available for download on the MPMS website and can also be found in Appendix A of the MPMS operator standards. All of the information requested in the template must be provided to the MPMS. Please note, that simply stating abandoned in place is not considered as a valid description for the method of abandonment. Detailed information must be provided in the abandonment certification. For example, the pipeline was capped and filled with water. 
If an operator has an active pipeline in the MPMS that has been abandoned, but opts not to submit it as abandoned because it is voluntary, MPMS staff will convert the pipeline to abandon on the operator's behalf. Through the OSAVE Upload Geospatial and Attribute Data Workflow, the operator is asked if any pipelines in the MPMS national layer for the OPIT have been abandoned but not included in the submittal, and if so, to describe those specific pipelines. If MPMS staff is uncertain of the pipelines in the MPMS national layer that should be converted to abandoned on behalf of the operator, MPMS staff will place the submission on hold from further processing to seek clarification from the operator. Regardless of the pipeline is submitted to the MPMS as abandoned, or if MPMS staff convert the pipeline to abandon on the operator's behalf, the abandoned pipelines are completely disconnected from the operator ID so that it does not negatively affect the mileage comparison between the MPMS submission and the FIMSA annual report. As a result, your pipeline data will be maintained in our data set as abandoned in the near future, but will no longer be associated with your operator ID. If a permanently abandoned pipeline, which is currently in the MPMS database as abandoned, has been removed from the ground, the operator should no notify MPMS staff so that we may remove it from the MPMS national layer. This may be done by including a detailed note via the upload geospatial and attribute data workflow when fulfilling the annual submission requirement or by sending MPMS staff a detailed email at any time during the year. Because the abandoned pipeline in the MPMS national layer is disconnected from the OPID, it is important to only submit the abandoned pipeline one time. If an abandoned pipeline is submitted that seems to match an already existing abandoned pipeline in the MPMS national layer, MPMS staff will hold back the submission from further processing to receive clarification. If unsure of what abandoned pipeline have been submitted to the MPMS, the operator may view the pipeline under the OPID that reported the pipelines as abandoned through the OSAVE map viewer. The operator may also email MPMS staff requesting a shapefile for the OPID's previously abandoned pipeline for use in their own mapping system. If an active pipeline was previously submitted to the MPMS as permanently abandoned in error, the operator must notify MPMS staff so that the appropriate steps may be taken to correct the pipeline data. This may be done by including the pipelines with correct attribute information in the submission data and providing a note with detailed explanation via the upload geospatial and attribute data workflow when fulfilling the annual submission requirement. If the annual submission requirement has already been fulfilled for the current calendar year when the error is discovered, the operator may send an email to MPMS staff indicating the specific pipelines that need to be reverted back to active on the operator's behalf and provide the correct attribute information for each of the pipelines that need to be edited. This includes providing a correct commodity attributes, low stress values if applicable, and correct status code values for each pipeline to be reverted from permanently abandoned to active in the MPMS national layer. Please note that reverting pipeline data from permanently abandoned to active will alter the mileage in the MPMS for the OPID. This adjusted mileage will be expected to match the mileage conveyed in the FIMSA annual report as well. The correct usage of revision code values is essential to MPMS staff when processing your data submission. The revision code notifies MPMS staff what has occurred to that particular pipeline segment since the previous submission and what to expect when comparing the new submission data with the pipeline data currently in the MPMS national layer. It is important for operators to note that in order to prevent errors from being incorporated into the MPMS national layer, when conflicting data is encountered, MPMS staff must place the submission on hold from further processing until clarification or corrections are provided. This must be done since MPMS staff do not know the pipeline and heavily depend on corresponding geospatial data and attribute information to take the necessary actions on the submission data during processing. Unfortunately, having to reach out for clarification creates delays in the processing of submissions for all operators and prevents the pipeline data from being implemented into the website map viewer sooner. It is beneficial to understand why the pipeline segment is being added into the MPMS national layer. Please note that none of the pipelines populated with any of these three addition related revision code values should already exist in the MPMS national layer for the corresponding OPID. The MPMS considers a pipeline to be newly constructed when it is constructed and added into service during the previous year and adds new mileage to the OPID. This means that the pipeline or section of pipeline did not replace an existing line in the same ditch. 
This is considered to be a repair and does not add new mileage to the OPID. When a pipeline is added to the MPMS because it changed in classification during the previous year, the pipeline is considered to be added to the MPMS because it is new to FIMSA jurisdiction, which is Revision Code J. Revision Code J should not be used to indicate that a pipeline no longer belongs in the MPMS because it has changed in classification. In this instance, the pipeline should be removed from the MPMS submission data. However, the MPMS must also be notified of the removal and the reason of the removal during the OSAVE workflow. Revision Code A is used to notify MPMS staff that the pipeline is being added because it was either transferred from another OPID or pipeline operator or simply left out of the MPMS submittals in error during the previous years and is now being correctly added into the MPMS. The submitted pipelines are always compared to the pipelines currently in the MPMS national layer that were previously submitted by the OPID. As a result, all pipelines populated with any of the three modification-related revision code values are expected to already exist in the MPMS national layer under the OPID. The pipeline or sections of pipeline populated with the revision code values indicating a spatial modification may be spatially different or contain different attribute information. However, it is expected to represent the same pipeline currently in the MPMS national layer. If the submitted pipeline has spatially changed because it includes a section of new construction, such as newly constructed reroute that did not previously exist, the new constructed reroute should be submitted as a separate segment. This allows the operator to correctly attribute the reroute with the revision code value C for new construction, which is a better representation of the pipeline. The remaining sections of the pipeline representing the same pipeline currently in the MPMS national layer would be populated with revision code values S or B. This provides a clearer picture of the pipelines and the changes that occurred since the previous data submission for the operator ID. This avoids any confusion MPMS staff may encounter when comparing the submitted pipeline data with the pipeline data currently in the MPMS national layer. The revision code for no changes should only be used when the spatial location and attribute information has not changed for the individual pipeline segment and matches exactly to the previously submitted pipeline that is in the MPMS national layer. If all of the pipeline segments to be submitted to the MPMS have not changed the spatial location or attribute information, and match exactly to all previously submitted pipelines that exist in the MPMS for the OPID, a notification of no change should be submitted in place of a data submission with all pipelines attributed as revision code N. For operators unable to track every single edit applied to the pipeline segment, we have allowed operators to default to revision code B for both attribute and spatial changes. However, any and all pipeline being added to the MPMS for the first time for the OPID must be identified and attributed with the most appropriate addition related revision code value. Operators should also never default to revision code N for no changes. For example, if a pipeline has a drastic spatial change due to improved re-GPS data and it is attributed as a no change, the submission will be held back from further processing until clarification is received. If a pipeline has a revision code that indicates that the pipeline already exists in the MPMS national layer when it is actually newly submitted, MPMS staff will seek clarification and possibly resubmission. To avoid delays in reviewing your MPMS submission, please be sure to have the correct revision code values before uploading your data submission to the MPMS. Along with your MPMS revision code, operators are required to submit national registry notifications to FIMSA. These notifications are required per 49 CFR Part 195.64 in order to notify FIMSA about sales, divestitures, construction, or any change in operatorship. MPMS will reference the notifications on file for your OPID during the submission processing phase, so complete and accurate notifications will minimize submission processing delays and phone calls from MPMS staff asking for change confirmations or clarifications. The forms section of the FIMSA website includes a guidance document with a flowchart to help you determine when and what type of National Registry notification you need to file. This concludes Chapter 4 of the 2018 MPMS Operator Webinar.